Hello, everybody. It's the end of another week. I hope you've had a good time reading the New Testament, hearing from the Holy Spirit, and writing in your journal what He's been saying to you. I've enjoyed uh, spending these these minutes with you each day, and I trust they've been a blessing to you. We are continuing our reading of the book of Romans as part of our New Testament reading plan for 2020, and today we are uh, in chapter 3 of Romans. So open your Bible, chapter 3, and let's... Uh, Let's look at some things here. And this it, today's a little bit of a continuation of yesterday. And, and in fact, what you'll find is the opening half of Romans, the first half of this book, the chapters all build. Paul is Paul, this is probably the most theological book in the New Testament, and Paul is building uh, toward some important truths, biblical theological truths, uh, later in this book. And he's just very systematically, step by step, laying that foundation. Uh, and and uh, what he starts addressing in chapter three um, is the relationship between the law of the Old Testament and salvation, the law and faith. And uh, you remember yesterday the Jews, because they had the law, thought they were superior to the Gentiles, even though they broke the law themselves. And they were and 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 in chapter two, Paul makes the point they're all sinners. He continues making that point in chapter three, and and when he when he, when he gets into defining what is the role of the law as it relates to salvation and God's eternal plan, he kind of comes in through the back door. And then, whoop, all of a sudden he makes his point. And that's how we're going to approach it, okay? Uh, he begins by talking a lot in this chapter. He talks a lot in this chapter about the righteousness of God. You know, the, the, purity, the, the, the purity of God, the holiness of God. He calls it the righteousness of God, the otherness of God, if you will. And... Um, and he says the righteousness of God is revealed three ways in this chapter. It's in this chapter that he says there are three ways that we begin to see the difference between God, who is righteous, and ourselves, humanity, because we're not righteous. And the three ways the, the righteousness of God is revealed, one is the law itself. So in your, in your Bible, in Romans uh, chapter 3, the first uh, few verses, uh, he asks, a rhetorical question. If, if Jews and Gentiles are all saved the same way through faith in Jesus, uh, then uh, what advantage does, does the Jewish people in their history have because of the law and circumcision and all that? He says they have a lot of advantages. In verse 2, one is that they were entrusted with the oracles of God, the Ten Commandments, the law that God gave Moses. That was a privilege. Um, and even and he talks about even though some of them in verse 3 did not believe and obey them, like he talked about in chapter 2, that did not nullify what God had done or the faithfulness of God. Um, but um, um, anyway, so they, they had the law given to them. And then if you drop down to verse 20 in chapter 3, he says, because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. That's what a lot of people you know, had, had a problem with. You know, the book of Galatians deals with that issue a lot, as well as Romans, that, that works and obeying the law. Somehow, yeah, I, I believe in Jesus, but, but don't I have to do all these good things, obey the law and all these things? Isn't it a combination of my believing Jesus and obeying the law, a combination of believing in Jesus and doing good that, that saves me? And, and over and over, the New Testament says, no, 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 no. Oh, it's just a, and we still have that problem today. You ask some people, are you a Christian? And they'll start talking about all the good things they've done. They'll start talking about the religious things they've done. I've been baptized. And so we have the same problem today. We just don't call it the law. We talk about how good we are. And so he says, because of the works of the law, obeying the word of God, doing good, no flesh, no human being, no person will be justified in God's sight. No person will be saved. He says this, for, here, here, listen to this. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. See, when I know God's standard, oh, I realize I haven't lived up to that, so I'm a sinner. Through the law comes the knowledge of what is right and wrong. What is sin? And then uh, in verse 21, he continues, but now, notice this, but now today, talking about Paul's day 2,000 years ago, the time of Christ. He said, but now apart from the law, the right, here it is, the righteousness of God has been manifested. The righteousness of God has been made evident, been revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So in that verse, he says there are two things that historically have revealed the nature of God, the righteousness of God. So what Paul is telling us is there are two things that reveal the righteousness of God, how he is other than and different than us who are sinners. One is the law, which reveals our sin, 
and in the process shows the righteousness of God. And then he said it to, said also there at the end of verse 20, and the prophets, talking about the Old Testament prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Amos, Hosea, all the others. Um, because, you know, they, they preached to the nation of Israel and uh, and. And Israel thought, you know, they were so righteous because they had the temple, they had the law, they had the sacrifices, the rituals and all that. And he said, no, you're not righteous because you're not obeying God. And the prophets talked about sin. Some of the things that, you know, like the Gentile sins in chapter 1 of Romans of, of uh, you know, adultery and murder and so on. But then then also the, the sins that the Jewish people at that time thought were acceptable sins, uh, the way they treated poor people the way they treated uh, immigrants, their dishonest business practices. On and on I could go. Um, and, and uh, you know, the truth is, uh, if you take the law and the prophets and put them together, uh, it shows the sin of all of us in America. It shows the sins of the liberals and the sins of the conservatives, the sins that one group thinks is acceptable and the other, and the other group thinks are acceptable. So if you think one group's got it all figured out, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Because sin is sin, brothers and sisters. And we need to be careful that we don't think our sins are acceptable and other people are not. The law and the prophets. Read the prophets. They will speak to us just as much as the law. And so what he's saying is the, the, the Old Testament prophets and the Old Testament law, what does it do? Shows us our sin. And by contrast, the righteousness of God. Here's the expectations of God. Here's who God is. Okay, God is right. God is holy. God is pure. And this is what he expects. And, and we just don't measure. We don't measure what the prophets talk about. We don't measure up to what the law talks about. Why? Because all of us, all of us are in the same boat. We're sinners. Maybe different sins, but we're sinners. The law and prophets reveal that. And then he adds, there's one more thing that reveals the righteousness of God. Verse 22 in Romans chapter 3. Verse 22, even the righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus for all those who believe, for there is no distinction. Then in verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Um, justified by grace and redeemed and all that in verse 24. Verse 25, look at verse 25. Now listen, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith, paid for our sins. This, notice this, this was to demonstrate his righteousness. So in verse 21, the law and the prophets demonstrate the righteousness of God. Uh, at the end of verse 20, 25, Jesus dying on the cross demonstrates the righteousness of God. What? Yeah. Because Jesus dying on the cross reveals that God is pure and holy. All of us are sinners. Just like the law says this is who God is, and we don't live up to it so we know what our sin is. And the prophets preached, you have all this religion, but you weren't, you weren't really righteous either. So the law, the prophets, and Jesus on the cross reveal God's righteousness and our sinfulness. And that's why in this chapter, over and over and over, he talks about how we're saved by faith, we're justified by the grace of God, none of works, none of the law, none of the good things that any of us do. So, what's the role of the law? What's the role of good works, okay? I mean, the Jews uh, who became followers of Jesus, many of them kept saying, no, but, but yeah, you got to believe in Jesus, but then you still have to be circumcised and you still have to obey the law. And today we have all kinds of people go to church and say, yeah, you got to believe in Jesus, but then you have to do this and you have to do that. And we judge each other because of all the do's and the don'ts and the law and the rules and, you know, on and on it goes. Well, he said earlier, the law is to reveal sin. Well, what, what, what is the role of the law? It's two things. The law, the law reveals God's righteousness, how good, how pure, how holy He really is. And the law reveals our sin because we don't measure up to it. That's the role of the law. That's all the role of the law has ever been. The law was never intended to save anybody. And He says it again and again in chapter 3. Not by obeying the law is anybody saved. Not by good works, religious works, good works, any works is anybody saved. The law... The Word of God shows how 
pure God is and how sinful we are. The prophets, how great and pure God is and how holy his expectations are and how sinful we are. And the cross of Jesus, that God demands righteousness and we are not righteous, we are sinners. And the only way we become righteous is through our faith in Jesus Christ. And so the law is not null and void. The law's purpose is fulfilled. The purpose of the law was to make known to us the righteousness of God and our sin. And so when somebody today tries to focus on doing all this good stuff to kind of feel worthy of heaven, they're making the same mistake the, the first, first century Jews who became followers of Jesus made the same mistakes the Jewish people in the Old Testament made of thinking the law makes you righteous when it never can and never will. And in fact, Paul makes the point later in Romans that the more you try to obey the law, the more you mess up. So have faith in Jesus. Love Jesus. Love Jesus. Serve Jesus. Serve Jesus. Walk in the Spirit of God. If you do that, you will fulfill the law. You'll do good. Because out of love and freedom, you want to. Stop trying to save yourself for being good and just love Jesus. God bless you. And uh, by the way, join us Sunday morning for worship online on our YouTube channel, Facebook Live, and then in person on campus here at First Baptist this Sunday, June 7 at 9 o'clock with the hymns and 11 o'clock with a contemporary song. So you can be with us on per online or in person. Let's worship Jesus together. God bless you. And I'll see you next week with some more devotions.